Well, greetings all in the, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we reflect on a passage from God's Word. And this morning, we're in the Old Testament, in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 23, and reading from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day, and we rejoice in it. We thank you, O God, that you are true to your promises, that you have been true to your promises from the beginning and still even today as we seek you with our whole heart, Lord. We know that you are faithful and true to, to your word. And so, Lord, as we come into your presence to rest and to reflect on your word, Lord, would you speak a word of encouragement and hope into our hearts this day? Lord, quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. So, chapter 8 of 1 Kings, verse 23. He lifted his hands toward heaven, and he prayed, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven above or on the earth below. You keep your, your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you in wholehearted devotion. This is the prayer of Solomon standing before the assembly at the altar of the Lord, and he is praising God. He's lifting his voice in prayer to Almighty God, the God of his father David, the God of their ancestors. And we pray to the same God, the God who has saved us. And so Solomon, in this moment of prayer, says, O God, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven above or on the earth below. And that truth holds for us today. There is no God in heaven or on earth who is like the God of all creation, the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, who watches over us, who provides abundantly for us, who meets us where we are in the midst of life and guides us, who directs our steps, who helps us in our time of need, an ever-present help in time of trouble. There is no God like him. And we're grateful that we're able to come before him, to actually commune with him, to be in his presence. My hope with these Bible breaks is that it gives each one of us an opportunity to just hit the pause button in our day and rest in him, to know his peace, to know his his comfort, to know his love. Even if it's only for 10 or 12 or 15 minutes in our day, we can be present with the Lord and to know his love. And so Solomon continues, he says, You keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you in wholehearted devotion. You see, this is an important verse because Solomon was acknowledging a truth in, the, in, in his day as in our day. There are all manner of gods. There are all manner of subjects of worship. Some scare the daylights out of me uh, because people are worshiping idols and false gods, believing that they have power and they have the ability to save, and they don't. And as we've been journeying through Daniel, we've, we've been seeing the same thing going on in the Babylonian era under the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, 
worshiping pagan gods, worshiping all manner of idols and gods, believing that they had power to, to help us humans in the midst of life, and they don't. There is only one true God in heaven and on earth, and that is the Lord God Almighty and his Son, Jesus Christ. And indeed, Jesus faced this in his time too. And not much has changed in that regard. The, the gods may be different today than they were back in Jesus' day or in Solomon's day. The idols may be different. But the result is the same. Worshipping and, and seeking after false idols leads to destruction, to death. There is only one true God in heaven and on earth and under the earth that is able to save, and that is through the, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. And our believing in him, our placing our faith and our hope and our trust in in him, surrendering ourselves to him in order that he can rule in our lives. He's the only way. That's why Jesus says in John 14, uh, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is the truth. It is also his promise for you and for me who are in Christ. And so Solomon says, you keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you wholeheart in wholehearted devotion. God keeps his promise. Jesus keeps his promise. Holy Spirit keeps his promise of unfailing love when we walk in wholehearted devotion with them. See, God will never force himself on us, friends. We have to seek after him. And when we seek him, we find him. But he does not chase after us and he does not coerce us or try to convince us to follow him. It is only through a heart surrendered to Jesus that we have the desire to actually walk with him in wholehearted devotion. And when we do, we experience the promises of God fulfilled in our lives. We experience his peace, his shalom, in ways that the world cannot provide, in ways that we can't even think or imagine. And so, friends, this day, we can't worry about yesterday. Yesterday's gone. And tomorrow's troubles are enough for tomorrow. We focus on this day. This new day that the Lord has given us and we that we rejoice in. This day, we lift up our hands in praise to Almighty God. With thanksgiving in our hearts and on our lips for all the ways and means by which he provides abundantly for us. And meets us where we are. And we give him all the glory and the praise for his promises fulfilled in and through his son, Jesus Christ, for all who place their faith and their hope and their trust in him. So friends, I encourage you to seek after the Lord with wholehearted devotion this day. And know his presence, his hand of favor, his love and his grace his mercy, his compassion, his peace in your heart and in your life today. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God who meets us in the midst of life. 
who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know everything there is to know about us, about this day, and how you would have us navigate it. And so, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. And we pray, Jesus, that you will live your life through us for your glory. And Holy Spirit, you will grant us the wisdom and the, and the courage to face this day with grace. And that you will direct our steps. Lord, may everything we say and do this day be for your glory. And lift high the name of Jesus, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures. So, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow.